Two years ago, Everton were relegated from the Premier League with just 24 points. Last season, I was appointed as director of football and we achieved a record points total for the championship. Today, in the Premier League, just two matches remain and we could qualify for the Champions League. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to Club 3, Part 11 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and I believe in miracles. Or more appropriately, I believe in Anthony Clark. Look at what my head coach has achieved this season. We were never challenging for the title, not really. I didn't honestly believe we were challenging for the Champions League places either. But here we are, two matches remaining, and we sit on 68 points. We have a game in hand over Man City and Chelsea ahead of us on 71, so we could go level on points with them if we win our game in hand today. And Newcastle are also playing their game in hand, and they are three points behind us. Since the January transfer window, our form has wobbled for the first time all season, pretty much. We have won five matches in the league, but we've also lost three and drawn two, so we've fallen off the pace at the very top, and that has allowed Newcastle to close that gap. How important is those three points we dropped away at Newcastle going to be come the final day? And I'll tell you what, maintaining this position is going to be tough. We're at home today, that's something, but we're playing Liverpool, who have already sealed the title. And Newcastle are playing Villa, who are fighting for their lives at the bottom of the table, trying not to get relegated to the championship. On the final day, Newcastle are away at Leeds, who are safe now and with nothing to play for, whereas we are away at Aston Villa, who will still be fighting for their lives. So the odds are definitely not in our favour. Liverpool are favourites for this match today. The Borden fans both expect a draw, though, and if we were to grab a point, then victory against Villa would guarantee us Champions League football next season. To be honest, we could secure it today if we grab a point and Newcastle slip up as well so anything is possible it just doesn't feel that way because we're playing Liverpool. So Mabude is out with pulled knee ligaments, Bicetich and Sonny Finch will have fitness tests and Vetzel's probably not quite ready to come back. Apart from that a full squad to choose from. Over to this man, you know him well, you've come to love him just as much as I have, Anthony Clark, the main man, the Everton legend. Regardless of whether we qualify for the Champions League or not, what he has achieved over the last two years is nothing short of incredible. But with two games to go, could we upgrade incredible to legendary? Can you imagine what the atmosphere must be like at the Bramley Moor Dock Stadium for this one? Beat Liverpool today and we've basically secured Champions League football. Well, this is the team Anthony Clark is relying on to get those three points today. We've got Christensen in goal, our new goalkeeper who we signed at the end of the January window. Vinicius at left back, Smolcic and Pino in the centre of defence, and then Cordero, our new right back. Lado, Rida and Mansvek in the middle, Rukovina and Ramazzani alongside Oteza up front. Let's make some magic happen. Oteza floats in the free kick to Smolcic, but it is cleared away. And Liverpool have a chance to break right at the very start of the match. But no, Ramazzani manages to steal the ball. He charges down the right flank, plays it back to Mansvuk, who's just trying to find an opening. Pino now just plays it back to Smolcic. We're taking our time to find that opening. Read it into Rukovina. Oh, and Alisson makes a good save. That's a Good sign, one minute into the match and we're actually creating an opening there. That's not what I expected. I thought these boys must be probably quite nervous at this point in time. Can you imagine? This is a really young squad. I think the youngest in the Premier League. And they're overachieving beyond all expectations this year. Nobody would have given them a chance to be in this position at this stage of the season. Newcastle are still drawing, so that's good at this point in time. There's still three points behind us. How long that lasts, your guess is as good as mine. Right, Rice picks up the ball for Liverpool in acres of space. We're just not getting the ball off them now. Liverpool showing what they can do. And, oh my word, Jao Pedro puts it wide. That should have been a goal for Liverpool there is no doubt about that I just can't believe what this team have achieved this year Anthony Clark is 
I've said it many times, an Everton legend in the making. It doesn't really matter how we play today because, to be honest, I'm expecting us to lose. The way that we're getting carved open here looks almost certain. Wow, Smolcic with an amazing block and clearance there. Well played, so well played. But it looks like we've got some tired players, actually. Uh, Martinelli looking very tired already. So we might be able to do something in the second half as their squad starts to tire. They've probably been playing Champions League football this season as well. Must be honest, no idea. Haven't been keeping an eye on that. I'm not in it myself, so I'm not interested at all. And have we given away a penalty? No, please, please. That must have been outside the box. That must have been outside the box. It didn't look like Rice had managed to get into the box. It didn't look like the foul happened within the box either. No, no penalty. Excellent. That is a free kick. Still a good opportunity for Liverpool, but actually not even a highlight. So, Newcastle still drawing. I'm sure you will agree that the level this team have performed to this year, we should be praising every single one of them. Yes, we've been lucky at times. We've kind of developed an act for dropping a significant amount of possession to the opposition. What is that goal? Oh my word, that is... There's nothing a goalkeeper can do about something like that. The rise, the fall, the dip, the swerve. Just ludicrous. It almost defied the laws of physics. Space opened up for him. But that was just so well placed. We're not any worse off now. We're still two points clear of Newcastle as things stand. And our players are actually a lot less tired than Liverpool's are. We haven't been absolutely dominated by them. Well, our XG is only half of theirs, but we've had six shots, three on target. But at the start of the second half, we've gone level on points in the league with Newcastle because they scored a penalty in injury time in the first half. Goodness me. Right, we do need a goal now to make sure. I mean, I'm hoping that we can go away from home and beat Villa. We, The way that we're playing, the way that our, our team are performing this season means we should, statistically... And in terms of form, get three points away from home. But they're fighting for their lives, as I say. We're going to need Villa to come back in this match, hopefully, against Newcastle and do something. Because at the start of this second half, I was about to say, we're not looking like getting the ball off of Newcastle. But, wow, Arteza is clear. He's clean through. And Allison stands tall and makes the save. <laughs> oh, no. The way that Arteza's been playing this season, I expected him to put that away. He's got about a goal every other game for us. Absolutely fantastic signing from Manchester United. But no, we are on the ball again, though, approaching 60 minutes. And we're picking up a few bookings, which, to be fair, I'm glad to see. I'm glad this team are being combative. Oh, my word, no! <laughs> well, I think we know who's going to be man of the match. Alisson is just standing in the way of everything we're throwing at this Liverpool goal we should definitely be level by now Noteza floats in the corner and it's cleared away oh come on Harvey Elliott to take the corner up at the other end uh, but Christensen claims good work half an hour remaining in this match and the it's a long ball from Christensen that is immediately cleared by Liverpool, but only as far as Ramazzani. Now Cordero plays it to Mansfield. We've got a couple of players in the box. We're just not getting enough of a threat into... Oh, and the ball is taken by Alisson again. We just haven't got enough players breaking forward. So we're playing with a central midfielder and a box-to-box -box midfielder currently. It does kind of feel like we could do with Reader or Mansfield bursting forward from midfield a little bit more. I'd like to see that, but I'm not the man in charge. This is all Anthony Clark. He knows what he's doing. I can't argue with his results this year. There's no point, is there? So we've definitely overperformed. There is no doubt about that. We've flown on the morale that we got from the promotion push last season, that record-breaking points total, the record number of wins in the championship, and we've just carried that forward. And I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about Europe next year. We're, we're pretty much a shoe in for some kind of European... Oh, Gutted. Absolutely gutted. So we're chalking this one off to experience. We're definitely not picking up three points or probably even one against Liverpool. This match is drawing to a close. A disappointing outcome for the Everton fans in their final match of the season. That's going to mean the fans are still unimpressed with my performance because they seem to only care whether we beat Everton and Man United. They're not bothered about the fact that we're competing for the Champions League this year. Oh no, they just need to see us beat our closest rivals, otherwise it's a C+, never anything higher.
We put in a brave performance there, 13 shots, a XG of 1.74 against the champions. But this is going right down to the wire. We're now level on points with Newcastle and we're only ahead of them in that fourth spot because of a one goal difference. But Newcastle strangely might have done us a favour because Aston Villa are now relegated. They have nothing to play for. Hopefully they will have switched off by the final day of the season and be on their holiday already. So it's safe to say coming up next is the biggest single match of my director of football career. Judgment Day is here. It's a shootout between us and Newcastle for the fourth Champions League spot. Now is not a good time for us to be without a win in four matches, but if there's any team that we could choose to play away from home, I think the most recently relegated one is probably the one we would pick. So the scene for possibly one of the greatest stories ever told is Villa Park. Your protagonists are Aston Villa, Everton and Anthony Clark. If Newcastle slip up, a draw will do it. Otherwise, we have to get three points today. And this is the team that Anthony Clark has chosen for this history-making moment. Christensen in goal, Vinicius, Smolcic, Pino and Cordero at the back, Lado, Rida and Mansfurk in the middle. Ilkan comes in on the left. Big change. Rukovina moves to the right with a taser up front. And Aston Villa have the first highlight of the match. Remember, they have nothing to play for. We have Champions League football, potentially. And oh my goodness! What a ridiculous goal to concede in the first six minutes of the match. That was so sloppy. Oh, boys, you've just completely just your confidence is just absolutely shot, isn't it? Oh, just looped over and <laughs> it just bounced off our defenders. It bounced off our goalkeeper. Mitrovic, Mitrovic just tapped it in. You can get back into this. I know you can. It's a corner from a taser. Pino! Oh, it's def saved by the goalkeeper. A taser takes it again. Interesting to see him taking the corners now. And Pino, oh, once again, climbed above everybody else. Couple of good efforts there. So, how are Newcastle getting on? They are drawing with Leeds. So, as things stand, we are out of the Champions League places. That was close. We managed to clear the ball off the line there. That was very, very, very tight. The pressure is definitely getting to these boys today. They're better than this. I know they are. Incredibly, we've only had 30% possession so far this match. We're just not getting any opportunities. And oh, my goodness me. Another effort there from Villa. A free kick from miles out that Anderson manages to knock... Sorry, that Christensen manages to hit onto the crossbar. As long as we go in 1-0 down at half time, we've got a chance. But this is this is a difficult thing to behold, my friends. This was our moment to make history. It's just it's felt so close. It's felt ridiculous all season. It's felt intangible. Even when we were first in the league early on, it, it never felt real. Now, on the last day going into this match, in fourth place, one goal different ahead of Newcastle. Oh, I'm just looking at this league table. Desperate to see a winner for Leeds. We do have a corner if this could make a difference for us. Caligari picks up the ball and loses the ball. Oh no, Villa now break upfield. Can we get the ball back and create an opportunity for ourselves? Pino does get the ball to Rukovina. How much of a consideration. That changed to shape in such a crucial match for Ilkan. Ramazzani there. Rukovina is in a Finch. Sonny Finch with the equalising goal. Oteza looks like it. No. Do not rule this out. No, that cannot be offside. It didn't look offside. I don't think that was an offside goal. This has to stand. How tight is that? Oh my word. So as things stand, we're back in the Champions League. Newcastle yet to score against Leeds United. We've got about 10 minutes left. Oh, this is an absolutely tense finish to the season. And it's Aston Villa now on the ball with nine minutes remaining of normal time. Mitrovic is in. And oh my word, what a tackle from Caligari. He didn't start the match, but obviously he's been brilliant for us the last couple of seasons, both in the championship and this season when he has played in the Premier League. Oh, a lazy ball there 
from Rukavina. Luca Dean picks up the ball, but oh, we're in. Lado manages to cut it out, and we lose it again. We're putting ourselves under too much pressure. Pino to Mansfurk to Reader. Oh, breaks the press nicely, but the ball over the top to Sonny Finch is too strong. And Villa come back at us again. Again, they've got nothing to play for. No! Oh, no! Oh, we've totally did that to ourselves. I can see why we were trying to go and get the winner. Absolutely. But that that is heartbreaking. <laughs> Absolutely heartbreaking. Newcastle still nil-nil. A late goal for Leeds now would be good. Or a goal for us. Pino. No. Loops over. We've got another corner. <laughs> This is so, so nerve-wracking. Time is running out. Time is running out. Oh, my word. <laughs> Five minutes of added time. Pino at the back post over the top. I, I think my heart rate is doing ridiculous things right now. And, oh, a 5.6 performance from our goalkeeper on the final day of the season. 5.6. Supposedly, he likes big matches. I don't think that's true. And there we have it, my friends. Villa dominated possession. We actually got a higher XG and had more shots, but we could not get that vital equaliser. We lestered it. One goal away from Champions League qualification. And we were in that top four pretty much all season. Just dip below right at the very end. 80% of me right now is absolutely gutted but the other 20 percent which will increase over the close season is so so proud of this Everton team they've been absolutely amazing and Anthony Clark is a legend as far as I'm concerned he has steered Everton into Europe in their first season back in the Premier League budgets are set for next year we've got 1.6 million pound in wages and transfer budget of actually 50 million that's looking pretty healthy because we've got James Garner's arranged transfer already to go through. Some other loan to buy options out there. So we could have a significant war chest for European football next year. And here's the board's expectations for next season. One of them realistic, one of them a little optimistic, I feel. In the league, just avoid relegation again. I think that's very sensible. We massively overperformed this season. Well, let's not assume that we're going to achieve the same feats next year. But they also, they want us to get to the quarterfinal of the Europa League. Hmm. No pressure there then, Tony. And what is this? There's a takeover in progress, apparently. So who knows what that's going to mean for our budgets, for our expectations. This, this is going to be an interesting summer. But before we go headlong into improving the squad for the year ahead, let's look back on what has been a remarkable season at Everton Football Club. Signing of the season, absolutely no surprise there, is Gabriel Rukovina. We signed him from Dinamo Zagreb for £5.25 million. He played 38 matches for us, scored 13 goals and got 7 assists. And he's now valued up to £36 million. Moneyball perfection there. We had other great performances from Rida, Smolcic, Vinicius... Ilkan, when he did play, was generally very effective. Callum Doyle, though, really didn't play anywhere near as much as I thought he would. Christensen had a very rough start. That final match of the season leaves something to be desired and a lot for him to improve on next year. Let's just admire these results. It's such a shame that our worst run of form, five matches without a win, came in the last five league games. That's what cost us Champions League football but it was a significant overperformance. performance Arteza with 15 goals played a huge part in getting us into the Europa League unsurprisingly revenue is in a much better place than last season sponsorship was up broadcast revenue more than doubled huge amount of prize money for finishing in the top five in the Premier League and Rida sold the most shirts this was the team of the year Hedl in goal of course Vinicius, Pino, Smolcic and Caligari at the back Lado, Rida and Mansverk in midfield Rukovina, Ramazzani and Arteza up front can't argue with any of that at all no records this year but Rukovina was fans player of the season young player of the season signing of the season Season, and Sky Sports say we proved much better than people expected. Yeah, much better than maybe you expected, but Anthony Clark and I knew all along. Oh wow, and look at this. Despite Rukovina winning all of the fans' awards, Adrian Ateza was actually voted the English player's young player of the year. 
Yep, £7 million we picked him up for from Man United. Now valued up to 55. Quite the asset that we have on our hands there. Um. What? Hold the phone. Something miraculous has happened. And it turns out we have qualified for the Champions League. Yeah. Look, UCL. So the coefficients have worked miraculously in our favour here. England have been given a fifth Champions League place. And despite going on a terrible end of season run, losing three of our last five games, we have failed our way into next year's Champions League. It's even on the club vision now. Be competitive in the Champions League. Oh my word. I suspect that's suddenly opening up a whole load of new players for us who would otherwise never have considered joining Everton Football Club. I'm going to still apply the Moneyball rules. I will look for value. I will look for maximising our profit. But it's actually happened next season. Anthony Clark is a Champions League head coach. Incredible stuff. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched today. Do join me again soon because the next summer transfer window is going to be pretty amazing stuff. If you have enjoyed it, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on, of course, to find out the second the next video drops. And in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. I'm in complete shock and confusion, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.